so thankful for those little kids. So. Welcome to Harlan Community Church. Uh, if this is your first time, we, we just want to welcome you and, and, and thank you for being our guest today. Uh, we have all kinds of different things going on uh, this morning with uh, Palm Sunday and next week with Easter. If you want to know that schedule, it's right here. The, the, the one thing I do want to highlight is the cantata this afternoon at 2 o'clock. We uh, go together with uh, Dysart United Methodist Church and they'll be here today at 2 o'clock. It'll be a lot of fun. Uh, also, next week, you don't want to miss the Easter breakfast. I know a lot of you come uh, just for the 10, 10 a.m. worship experience. You don't want to miss the uh, Easter potluck breakfast next, ne next week. Because I think we have a lot of potlucks here, but this is my favorite one. So I love breakfast food, and, and this, is, this is like the height, the pinnacle of, of, of breakfast food. So don't miss it. It'll be a lot of fun. If you don't like breakfast food, just come and hang out with people. So uh, it, it's a, always, always a good time. Uh, the cel Celebration Sunday, this is the week after Easter. We're going to be doing all kinds of baptisms. We're going to be doing children dedications. We're going to even be bringing in a couple new members to the church. Uh, what did I just say? Members? Partners to the church. I'm sorry. If we're, if we're going to change the vocab a little bit, I, I better use it. So um, that's, that's exciting. One, one of the cool things is Anthony's going to be baptized, right? So come, come, come up here, Anthony. Now, now this is really cool because, you know, I'm really excited about this. You know, Anthony's been starting to attend a Sunday school class, not a youth Sunday school class, but an adult Sunday school class. And, and uh, during the reading, you know, he, he's like, that's something I need. So he, he invited Jesus in, to be a part of his life, and he's going to be getting baptized on April 27th. So now we get to celebrate a new life in Christ with Anthony. So, so. remember to encourage him in his walk. It, it's not always easy to be a teen. Actually, are you, are you a teen yet? Are you a teen yet, or are you a tween? Yeah, so it's a little hard, huh? There we go. Now tie, tie that tight. There we go. All right, good job. Thanks. So, so that, that, that's pretty cool. Uh, at this time, we're going to take our uh, offering and ask our ushers to come, come forward. A lot of people question the name of Jesus. Jesus is probably one of the most debatable topics in all the world. You know, there have been wars fought over who Jesus is. And it's one of the most contested things, maybe not necessarily in these walls, maybe, maybe some of you don't necessarily know who Jesus is, but or understand it all completely, but I think if you look at the world paradigm and if you look at the world view of who Jesus is, there's going to be a lot of conflicting answers. Some people will say that Jesus, well, he's just a good teacher. Well, we can't have that. We can't have just a good teacher because he's more than that. And if a good teacher, you know, like English or math or whatever, came in to, to you and said, yes, I'm a good teacher, but I also tell you I am Lord, there must be something behind it. You can't tell people you're Lord unless there's something behind it. There, there must be some fact or truth behind it. Because you can't just make it up. You can't just say, hey, I'm Lord, right? If I said I'm Lord, I'd be a liar. But I'm not going to go to the cross for it. I might be a lunatic as well. If, if I said I was, I was Lord, I might be a lunatic. People might think I'm crazy, but do you think hundreds and hundreds and thousands of people would follow that? And, and 
then if you're a lunatic and, and you make all these predictions and then, then you rise again, and just like you said you would, and 500 people actually are witnesses of, of this resurrection, documented at least, 500 documented witnesses, there must be something more than just a lunatic. So he's, he's not a liar. He's, he's not a lunatic. So there's only one, one thing that he could be. Lord. He's truthful. He's honest. And he's telling you like it is. That, that, that's a question, that's a contemplation that was put together by C.S. Lewis. Maybe you've heard it before. You know, Jesus can't be lunatic, liar, and Lord. There's only one. One of those that he can be. And that is Lord. So as we look today in Scripture, there's, there's a lot of people asking this question, who is Jesus? And people are coming to Jesus asking him, who is Lord? And, and people want to know that question. And, and hopefully you guys continue to seek that out. Hopefully you, you, you're not content with just where you're at now, but you continue to ask that question and, and, and seek it more and more. And ask that question. Who is Jesus? Now, today, normally we read a big passage and, and things like that. But we're going to just read one verse. One simple verse. It's found in John 10, 24. So please read with me uh, the, this verse. We'll read the whole scripture together. Uh, the Jews gathered around him, saying, How long will you keep us in suspense if you are the Christ? Tell us plainly. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much. We thank you for your word. This question is something a lot of people want answers to. Not just the people in this passage, but people maybe even inside these walls. Maybe people that are in Laporte City that want to know the answer to this question. Who is the Christ? Who is Jesus, is it true? So we long to know the answer. And some of us already do. We do know the answer. We do know that you are Lord. So continue to speak to us. Continue to show us. And continue to real, reveal to us who you are. We praise you in your name. Amen. I want to take you back in time. For some of you, this might not be as long ago, but when you were a kid, you were sitting maybe in your parents' station wagon or maybe minivan, and you were taking a road trip. You were going to Florida. One time we, we took our van from Maine to Florida. Maybe, you know, maybe it was just an hour down the road. But no matter how long the distance, there was probably a question that maybe you asked, or maybe has been asked to you. And you guys already know the answer, or at least the question. Are we there yet? Are we there yet? You know, we always want to know, are we there yet? Or how much longer? How much longer is it going to take to get to the time? Now, Jesus was asked this question a lot. Tell us. Tell us plainly who you are. But it's not always that easy. Because Jesus doesn't necessarily say, hey, I want to tell you, and I've told you in snippets here and there, but to tell you exactly who I am, it's not time yet. So we have to wait. We have to take time, and we hear all these questions. Now, in John, John is one of those books that I absolutely love because it's all about finding out who Jesus is, finding out so we can know who Christ is and, and, and believe in him all the more. It's all, all throughout the book of John. It's people saying who he is. John 1, 29. John the Baptist is one of those guys who said who Jesus was. He, he called him the Lamb of God. Andrew, later on in chapter 1, said uh, this to, to his brother Peter. We have met the Messiah. You've, you've got to come with us and, and meet him. So we've got Lamb of God. We've got Messiah. We also, later on in the same chapter, of chapter 1, we have a, a, a guy named Nathaniel, sim, similar name to me, but uh, don't know him, never met him. And 
he said that he was the Son of God. These are all different descriptions, all different titles for the Christ, all true, but all different. It, it tells a little bit of part about it. You know, it's interesting the, who, who these people you know, are saying who Jesus is, and they've never actually been told by Jesus who he is. They just come to that conclusion on their own. Later on in chapter 4 of verse, uh, chapter John, uh, John, John chapter 4, Jesus meets this woman, this, this Samaritan woman, and he has a conversation with her, and she leaves this conversation, and she tells other Samaritans that he's, I've met this man, I've never met him before in my life, but he's told me everything about him. Is he the Christ? So she's coming to this recognition. She's, she's starting to come a little bit further that she is starting to understand who he is, but she's still having this question, is this exactly who, who I think it is? Now, Jesus stayed in Samaria a little bit longer. It's a couple days, really. And these other Samaritans gathered around him and, and started listening to him, talking to him, and finding out more and more about who he is. And these other Samaritans come to this conclusion. After a couple of days, they say, he must be the savior of the world. That is the conclusion they came to. That, that, that's an amazing conclusion. That's an amazing answer. But everybody else is still wondering who Jesus is. Jesus is talking to him, and he's saying, but it's not time for me yet to reveal to you who I am. We see this in John chapter 7, verse 6. He doesn't necessarily confirm, but he doesn't necessarily deny who he is. It says, the right time for me has not yet come. For you, any time is right. You know, we, we want the answer now. We, we want the answer to, to come to us so quickly but yet, Jesus here is saying, patient, it's not time yet. He, he, he has a lot of things to do left on the earth, and he knows if he reveals himself plainly at that time, who he is, it's going to be sped up. It's going to be taken so much quicker. But yet, he's not ready. He's not ready to be taken to the cross. He has things more, more to do here on, on earth. You know, sometimes he answers questions with a uh, questions. He sometimes said sidesteps answers because he doesn't want to have the question. Have you ever gone to Jesus with a question? And, and, and he says, not yet. That's, that's kind of the hardest place to be, really. You know, you're asking for Jesus at, to act, but sometimes you maybe feel ignored by him or, or impatient, waiting for an answer. You want Jesus to, to give you the answer so quickly, and you're like, why haven't you answered? But he's saying, we're not there yet. We're not there yet. It's the hardest place to be than, uh, than any other place. Because if you know the answer, you know, okay, it'll eventually come. But the, here, here they're saying, well, we're, we're, we're in this place, this, this holding pattern. It's not time yet. Jesus does start to reveal who he is, but it's little snippets. John 8, verse 58, it says, I tell you the truth, before Abraham was born, I am. This, they picked up stones to stone him, but Jesus hid himself. You wonder why he, he was holding out on, on, on people, because he knew as he started to reveal himself, people would pick up stones. But it's kind of cool. It's kind of cool. It says, but Jesus hid himself. If you're in a group, let's say maybe this is the size of group that he was talking to, and, and, and he makes his claim, it's hard to disappear from 60, 70, 80 people. It's hard to do that. It's not an easy thing, but it's not the only time he ever did it. It makes it so interesting. There was a time where, where people tried to push him off a cliff, but he just disappeared throughout the crowd. That, that's amazing. John 10, 11, he, 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 he describes himself as the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. So he's starting to call himself a shepherd, but he also reveals himself that he's going to die for them. They don't understand that. They don't fully uh, claim to understand that. 
in John 10, 30. It says, I and the Father are one. Now, this was a hard concept for them to understand. Again, the Jews picked up stones to stone him, and they said, blasphemy, because you are a mere man claimed to be God. And just a few verses later, it says, the Father is in me, and I am in the Father. Again, they tried to seize him, but he escaped their grasp. That's an amazing thing. He continues to escape because it's not time yet. It's not his place yet. He's not there yet. Finally, Jesus gets to that place. We find that in John 12, 23. It says, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. And, and here, the Father reveals himself. Not, not Jesus, but the Father reveals who Jesus is. The Father says, uh, save me from this hour. No, it was for this very reason. I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. And then a voice came from heaven. I've glorified it. And will glor- glor- <clears throat> hey, Mike, can I get another cup of water? I, I don't know what's going on. Uh, <clears throat> I have glorified it and will glorify it again, Jesus said. This voice was for your benefit, not mine. But when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all men to myself. He said this to show the kind of death he was going to die. Oh, thank you so much. That was quick. (laughs) It's almost like a miracle happened right here. Water came from nowhere. Who the Father says he is. I have glorified it and glorify it again. This, This is an amazing statement. This is a voice coming down from heaven. This is exactly what the people needed to hear. And Jesus says, this, this voice was for your benefit, not mine. Because I've already heard the Father's voice. I know the Father, and he knows me. I and the Father, and the Father are one. But when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all men to myself. He said this to show the kind of death he was going to die. So when he says, when he's lifted up... He means lifted up on the cross. People are going to be watching him when he dies. People are going to be seeing all this from all over the place. Not only is he going to be lifted up on a cross, but he's lifted up on a cross on a hill. People all around could see him in in Jerusalem. It, It was a place everybody knew was going to happen. It was one of the biggest things of that time. They they knew when different crucifixions were going to be. It was kind of like a town event, which is kind of sad. So so we we see in these passages who other people say Jesus is. We see who Jesus says he is a little bit. And we also see who the Father is. But the biggest question we'll have to answer is who do you say Jesus is? There's this video that I... I, uh, found online through, through uh, Focus on the Family. I'd, I'd like you to check it out right now. Now we go back to the, the, the passage of Scripture that Annette read at the, the beginning. Maybe, maybe you heard it, maybe you didn't. But he, he's going into this town, Jerusalem. It's called the Triumphal Entry. And, and people are shouting, Hosanna, glory to the highest. And, and people are starting to recognize who he is. But it doesn't take long. For them to really turn their backs and kind of forget about what, what, what he meant to them. It only took just a few days for, for, for people to say, well, maybe he wasn't. Maybe even some of the disciples changed their mind about who he was. You know, we have Judas, the one turning him in. We have Peter, who is even being told by, by Jesus that you're going to disown me three times. And what happens? He disowns them. Three times. Right before the rooster says, you know, how you answer who Jesus is is the biggest question that you'll ever have to answer. And then the question is, though, what will you do with your belief in Jesus after you've answered that question. How will you live out your faith in the world to show people who Jesus is? It's, it's twofold. We don't, we don't just get to answer who Jesus is and then hold on to him for ourselves. But Jesus 
once you understand who Jesus is, he kind of gives us a mandate, a kind of a, a commandment, a commission to go out into all the world and show people who he is. You know, right before he rode into Jerusalem on a donkey, he wept for the city. He cried for, for, for those people that were, were there, not, not just the people that were following him, but for those who weren't going to follow him. He cried for the people that, like Pilate and Caiaphas, those, those people that, that were going to be actually instrumental in his death. He cried for these people that who really didn't understand who he is. And, and he cried for the people that uh, put king of the Jews as, as kind of a mocking thing on, on the cross. He cried for those people that, that wouldn't really understand ever who, who, who he was. Who is Jesus? Who is Jesus to you? Who do you claim that Jesus is? And how will it change your life? You know, we sang, sang the song Cornerstone. It has, has a line... Uh, what, what, what is it? I, I can't even remember. It's something about the name. Any of the singers remember it? I'm going to have to come up here into the music. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest name, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. Strong in the Savior's love, through the storm, he is Lord, Lord of all. There's something just about that name. He, he's, he's considered the name above all names, the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings. And there's something just about that name, Jesus, even though back then there was a ton of them. There, Jesus was actually a common name. But we hardly use it now. We, we hardly ever use the name Jesus, except when we talk about the Christ, because, because there's something about that name, the name above all names. So here we are in, in the van, riding to Florida. It's a three-day trip. I was, oh, how old was I? I, I, was, I was in high school, so I was, I was a little bit more, more mature, but... I think I was about Cody's age, ride, riding that, that whole distance. I was a sophomore in high school. And, and that's a long trip. My brother, however, he, he, he's a lot younger. He's, he's about five. Can you imagine the length of the trip for him? That, that's an even longer trip. That, that takes a long time. And I don't know how many times... He asked, are we that there yet? Or how much longer is it going to take? You know, Jesus died on the cross 2,000 years ago. And sometimes we just hold back ourselves from saying, you know, this, this is Jesus and this is what he's done for me. How, long it, how much longer is it going to take for you to recognize who Jesus is? How much longer is it going to take for to you to see that Jesus loves you? How much longer is it going to take for, for, for you to see that Jesus died for you and not, not only did he die, but he rose again? How much longer is it going to take for you to recognize that in the world? How's that going to change your life? I'm going to ask the worship team to come, come forward and we're going to close on, on this song, but I, I want you guys to think about that because this is the most important question you'll ever have to answer. Who is Jesus? Who is Jesus? Let's pray. And this week is considered Holy Week, so we do some things that are a little bit different in our pattern this week that I uh, hope you'll take part in. Thursday, we're going to have a communion service here, uh, so come, come for that. that that's going to be a great time. Also, um, if, if you haven't got some invites, uh, our challenge is to invite three people, three people that need to hear about Jesus next week. Uh, ne next week's theme is, is this changes everything, and, and Jesus really does. So uh, if you haven't gotten invites and, and you, or you want to hand, hand out more than three that we gave you last week, uh, come to me and I'll get you some, okay? 
Uh, go be the church. Love God, love others, and serve all. Amen. <laughs>